Welcome back to my channel. I'm starting a series of reprocessing videos of old images and data and this one will be the first in that series and I'm going to reprocess Caldwell 49 or the Rosette Nebula. My name is Morten and you are watching Frost Astrophotography. Well, the first days of 2025 was really promising, but now we have had really bad weather and the last couple of days it's been really, really warm here and high winds, it's taking a toll on the snow here. And even though the weather looks nice today during the day, I don't see any opportunities in the near future. For these uh, reprocessing videos I have only one rule and that is that I'm not going to add any data. I'm going to take the existing data that I have so I can do a comparison image for you uh, between the last published image and the reprocessed one. My main focus area will of course be new processing techniques and tools available to use and I see uh, one area in particular that is going to be interesting and that is the stretching to reveal details. This is the first video in my reprocessing of old data in PixInsight video and we are starting with the Rosette Nebula or Caldwell 49. I have done two versions of this nebula previously. The first one back in 2022 and then one more in 2023. And between those two, I added data. So uh, this data was captured in the beginning of 2022 and in the beginning of 2023. We are up to a total of 22.5 hours, 267 light frames. So for these uh, reprocessing videos, I won't be adding any data. I will just take the latest version of the image that I have and use the current knowledge and skills and available processing tools to see if I can improve the image here. So we are starting with some master light frames here, master HA uh, drizzle to X. Master O3 uh, Drizzle 2X, of course. Master S2 Drizzle 2X. Back in 2022 and possibly even 2023, I did include some data that was not maybe up to the current standards that I set for myself. And that is obviously going to affect the results back then. Uh, and that is obviously going to be uh, a major improvement of the new version of the image. 
in some cases, most maybe. Uh, I didn't use drizzle. In some cases, also most, I did not have blur exterminator. But I think the foremost reason for improvement is that my stretching technique has changed a lot. So we will probably see some other color palettes in the new version and hopefully more details in the new version. For the first image here, I did it as a test. I didn't save all of the versions going forward with the processing. So in the beginning here, we're not going to compare one to one, but on the left here is the non-stretched in linear mode, uh, old version of the image, including stars. On the right is the new version, not stretched in the linear, just screen transfer function, but without the stars. And I don't think we can see so many differences here because I did in fact use Blur Exterminator on this version here. So if we compare the details here, they are fairly similar, similar I would say, if you disregard the stars here. So nothing much has happened in the linear phase, I would say, of this processing. Moving forward here now, we have skipped through to the non-linear phase, and this is the stretched version of the hydrogen alpha master light frame. And you can see here on the left, I did a histogram transformation only, and I was very aggressive with the black point here. And as you can see, in comparison to the right version, which I have used, some more sophisticated measures of stretching on, there are differences in how much data you have actually revealed. Down here, for example, if we're looking at some details, you can see that there are a lot of data here that is not visible in the left image. And this is, of course, something that will have an impact on the final version of the image. You can also see um, some more details in this section of the image. And it's going to be interesting to see here what this does to the final image. Moving into the integrated SHO image, this is first step, I would say. It has simply been joined together, S, H, and O, and I've run through the SCNR to remove some of the green. And you can see here that we have a much clear, much more clear image here in the old version with the black point adjusted. And it's a more dim version to the right here because I have a lot more details revealed, more data from the other filters, I would say. And it will require some more work here on the blue and uh, yellow orange nuances to bring them out. But I would say that it will be a much nicer final result in the end. Jumping back to the final step here. Now I've done all of my processing in the non-linear phase and that is color adjustments. I ran through some sharpening, removal of the noise. I've added a synthetic luminance layer for extra contrast and sharpening, some dark structure enhancement, etc. You can see all of this in my SHO step-by-step -step processing guide that I will be linking in the video description if you would like to check that out. But you can see here that the details are still visible here. The colors might not pop out as much as in my old version, but they are much more natural, I would say. You could still achieve the blue that you want in the middle here. You can also achieve the orange-yellow on the nebulosity outside the middle blue ring. 
One major difference, of course, is that I have added steps to strengthen the sharpening effect and also adding much more contrast. So the details of the center of the image here are much, much better, I would say. You could see much more details in the structures of the nebulosity here. And that is not due to any extra data whatsoever. It's exactly the same data. Uh, the big difference here is that I've used another stretching technique and I've added a synthetic luminance layer, which I have sharpened and increased the contrast on. And that has this effect on the image here. The final comparison, of course, I've added the stars back uh, on my original image here to the left. I've used SHO stars, and that means that you don't have so many colors. I've not even tried to match the colors here. I've just added SH and O in each of the channels like you do for the starless version. And that means that you don't really have any colors whatsoever on the stars that you might have in the image to the right here. In that image, I've used synthetic RGB stars to try to match the original as close as possible. I've also stretched the stars more conservatively in the new image here. And uh, that will make them a little bit smaller than in the image to the left. And of course, you have a, an ocean of details in the right image here that you don't have in the left image. So I would say a fairly good result, positive result here for Caldwell 49 Rosette Nebula. All data from 2022 and 2023, 22.25 hours in total. And uh, yeah, enjoy this image. And I will uh, return with some new objects. And I will also do some more reprocessing videos of my old data to see if I can make some improvements of the image and maybe reveal some more details that were not there in the previous version. Thank you so much for watching this video and consider subscribing if you're not already doing so and perhaps give it a thumbs up. If you want to support the work with these videos there is an option listed in the video description and until the next video I wish you have clear skies.